According to Zambia's Reserve Bank Governor Michael Gondwa, the country's economy is expected to grow by 7.7% in 2012 from 6.6% uh, last year, partly boosted by reforms in the southern African state. Joining us now on the line from Zambia to look at Zambia's growth, Willard Wimba, independent economist. Willard, thanks for joining us. Um, what did you make of the latest growth forecast uh, that came through from the Reserve Bank? Well, this is the best thing that can happen, uh, uh, of course, for any nation, especially a less developed country like Zambia. And it's that fine to see that uh, we are growing at a phenomenal rate of 7.7%, which uh, not even the developed countries are, are managing to grow at that rate. So I think it's a very good, uh, good thing and good indication. And of course, with every economic growth, uh, especially in a less developed country like Zambia, comes with small uh, uh, foreign direct investment because uh, foreign investors are more confident and comfortable to invest in a country where they know the economic growth uh, is, is phenomen phenomenal, where they know the economy is stable. So it gives them some sort of confidence and expectation that uh, they will be able to make a realization and a return on their investments. I mean, when we're talking about growth, you're also talking about equitable growth. And uh, you, you wonder at what point in time you're going to start seeing that income gap narrowing in Zambia. There's a lot of talk about this. Um, do you feel that the government is, is doing enough to, to, achieve, um, to achieve equitable growth as we always talk about? Of course, that's a very good question. And uh, it's uh, where we miss it at, 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 at certain points again. There's a difference between economic growth and economic development. So, yes, what we've seen is economic growth, and now we need to see economic development. Suffice to say that, yes, I, would, I would think the political will is there. You know, the, the current uh, government, the ruling government, came in, uh, in power on the, on the premise that they shall put more money in the, in the, in the people's pockets, the majority of the Zambians. And we've seen them making certain strides uh, towards uh, Towards that goal, we've seen them uh, uh, bringing in legislation to to, to 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 talk about the minimum wage. So there's a minimum wage bill, or uh, what, what, what the minimum wage that somebody should get uh, when they are working. So when you look at that, uh, that those are strides to, uh, trying to bring uh, equality to the citizens. Then you also look at them uh, trying to create jobs in different sectors of the economy, uh, trying to, uh, to to boost agriculture, which supports most of the rural uh, and, and poor Zambians. And all those are strides. Uh, of, of trying to bring uh, equality. We've also seen uh, a lot of strides uh, in, uh, in, in, in infrastructure development, for example, just trying to give uh, the, the Zambians uh, uh, jobs. So, yes, we've not yet reached that, position, uh, that point where I would say the income is uh, equitably distributed and uh, there's uh, uh, substantial economic development, but I think it's a chicken-egg uh, uh, scene. Uh, which one begins first? To me, I think the, the fact that there is this economic growth, ultimately with the right policies, uh, it will lead to economic development to where we have uh, at least a relative uh, uh, equal distribution of this wealth in the country. And of course, you know, the minimum wage would put more money in people's pockets. What is your assessment of, of the development of the secondary economy and diversifying away from, from the mining sector? True, and uh, I think uh, that has become a serious song in, uh, in, in, in Zambia, not just uh, with the current government, but with all the previous governments. Uh, Zambia has relied so much on uh, copper exports and most of our economic growth actually results from copper exports when the copper markets are doing well. And that's why you find that in, terms of, in times of, of crisis, global meltdowns and uh, uh, financial crisis, you find that Zambia also doesn't perform so well because of the, the commodity copper, which is the main export, is affected. We've seen again, like I said, the strides by the new government trying to boost tourism as uh, one of the key sectors that will replace mining in terms of the revenue that the government will, will be realizing. And I hope on that, if we follow that path and maintain that path, of course, not just uh, realizing tourism, but many, many other sectors. Agriculture, for example, which I, which I mentioned, construction, we've seen massive uh, investments in the road sector in Zambia, as I'm talking uh, uh, right now. All that is diversification, trying to, to move away from uh, the mines, which are the main source of revenue for, for this country. So, yes, I would say we've sung so much about diversification, but I think we've not done much to diversify, and uh, that should be what the government should really look at 
in terms of uh, stimulating more growth. I mean, it's, I suppose, government regulation, government reforms, government prioritizing specific areas. And then, of course, you, you also need to have the banks uh, being able to provide loans uh, to, to entrepreneurs in the SME sector. Um, you know, speaking to Zanarco's bank, they say they're, they're very focused on agriculture in particular. Do, do you feel that uh, people are, are given enough, enough financial support to, to be able to start up businesses or create initiatives, particularly in agriculture? Of course, my, my, my answer to that one is a pure no. And I think that is one of the problems uh, that uh, the so-called financial, financial sector development plan under the Bank of Zambia is one thing that they're trying to, to, to tackle in order to, in, to increase and enhance financial inclusion, provision of loans uh, to, to, to entrepreneurs, provision of loans to the agricultural sector. So it is something that uh, uh, is being worked out at the Bank of Zambia right now under the financial sector development plan. But suffice to mention that it's not only that which is a problem. The other problem is it, uh, interest rates in Zambia on loans are quite, quite huge. So that is a serious disincentive for, for people to borrow uh, in order to invest uh, in, in production uh, 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 industries and for people to borrow for production uh, purposes. It becomes yeah. a hindrance when uh, the interest rate is so, 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 so high. So I think uh, it's not only about provision of these loans to the, to, to the entrepreneurs and those who would want to engage in business, but also providing uh, these loans at the right and affordable interest rates so uh, as to uh, stimulate more people to borrow for the right reasons. Well, Willard, thank you so much for joining us today. It's good to get some insights uh, into those issues. Willard Mwimba, independent economist, joining us on the line there from Zambia.